The Heavenly Vision Revelation 4 gives a glimpse of the heavenly throne room. This vision of the throne room is a powerful reminder of the majesty and glory of God. The presentation of the throne room, its description, the people surrounding it, and everything that happens shows that God is powerful like no other being. And yet, even though He is so far above us, He invites us into His presence. Have you ever sat and thought, why does a God so high and mighty care about little old me? Have you ever sat down and wondered at the holiness, glory and majesty of God Almighty? Have you ever stopped and thought about the day you finally see God high and lifted up on His throne? Have you ever stopped to think how moved and shocked and even unworthy you will feel to be in the presence of the Ancient of Days? In Revelation 4, we see a vision into heaven. Revelation 4 reveals to us a vision of things that you will one day see as a believer. I want you to just imagine, imagine the things that you will one day see. You will one day see God on His throne, to see Him in all of His beauty and all of His glory. Can you imagine? You will one day see the living creatures described in the Bible. You will see the cherubim and seraphim. You will one day see the 24 elders seated on the 24 thrones. One day you will see the sea of glass that is as clear as crystal. You will one day see these things and we tend to think we are going to have to wait an extremely long time to see these things. But the truth is, we will not have to wait as long as you think. Let's say you have 80 more years to live on this earth, on the grand scheme of things. That is a very short amount of time in terms of eternity. So I can say that you will soon see these wonderful things written in Revelation 4, and how wondrous and glorious this will be. In Revelation 4 we see a vision into heaven. Revelation 4 contains several messages that can be broken down into different sections. Let us take a look at each of them. The Invitation into Heaven Revelation 4 verse 1 After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking to me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. The first thing we note from John's vision is the open door. There was an open door in heaven. John was called to go through the open door. John will be shown things that concern the future and not John's present day. This is why the book of Revelation is called The Unveiling. Its title is derived from the first word of the Koine Greek text, Apocalypsis, meaning unveiling or revelation of the things to come. Revelation 4 verse 2 and 3 Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Immediately I was in the Spirit. John was in the Spirit and focus on what drew his attention. What drew his attention was the throne and the one who is sitting on the throne. Remember, 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 in the year that King Uzziah died and Isaiah saw the throne room of God, his attention was also drawn to the Lord and his throne. Isaiah 6 verse 1, In the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. 
And this is something that will be amazing. Heaven will have so many wondrous and glorious things, people and angelic beings. But all these things will fade into the background because of God and his wondrous and glorious throne. After all, the center of all things is his throne. All of creation bows before his throne. Within Revelation chapter 4, this word throne is used 14 times. And in the entire book of Revelation, the throne is mentioned over 45 times. John saw someone sitting on the throne, and the description of this person indicates that it was God. John likened the appearance of the person sitting on the throne to Jasper and Carnelian. Revelation 21 verse 11 describes Jasper as a stone that is as clear as crystal. It says, having the glory of God, her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. This means that the one sitting on the throne was precious, blameless, holy and full of light. John also saw a rainbow surrounding the throne of God. Revelation 4 verse 3, And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance, and there was a rainbow around the throne, in appearance like an emerald. This rainbow was a complete rainbow, and not an arched rainbow like the rainbows we see here on earth. The rainbow symbolizes God's mercy and grace upon mankind. It shows that even in the last days, God will still show his mercy to the inhabitants of the world and will still call them to repentance. He is patient with us, and the best we can do is to turn to him. Genesis 9 verse 13 I set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. This rainbow reminds us of the covenant God made with Noah, that he will never destroy the world again with a flood. The activities of praise and worship that take place in heaven are illustrated in Revelation 4 verse 4 to 11. The creatures around the throne represent different things. The 24 elders represent the redeemed people of God. Elders represent the people of God, especially in the Old Testament. The 24 courses of the priesthood represented all the priests, and we see this in 1 Chronicles 24. And the 12 tribes and the 12 apostles represent all the faithful. Revelation 4 verse 4 to 11, And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass, like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf. And the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come.
And when those beasts give glory and honour and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth for ever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth for ever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy. O Lord, to receive glory and honour and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. The cherubim do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy. The cherubim constantly repeat the phrase, Holy, holy, holy. This should reveal something to us about God. At his very core, God is holiness. God's holy nature and character is declared and emphasized with a three times repetition. It is indeed true that God is love, yet it is important to note that the cherubim do not rest day or night saying love, 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 but rather the cherubim do not rest day or night saying holy, holy, holy. And for endless ages in eternity, we too, like the cherubim, will marvel at the holiness of God. Unfortunately, in the generation we live in, there is a Christianity that is developing that ignores the holiness of God. And to be frank, it is a Christianity which is quite literally hostile towards the holiness of God. A Christianity that only believes that God is love. Therefore, because he is love, he accepts people living in sin and flaunting their sin and celebrating and condoning it. But that is not the God that sits on the throne in Revelation 4. The God who sits on the throne in Revelation is a holy God, who directs people to repent and believe, who directs his people to live holy lives. Allow me to focus on the last phrase in Revelation 4 verse 11. The elders worship God, saying, For thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. This phrase affirms to truth that God is the great creator. Creation and all its wonders do not exist by accident. A creator God, out of his own will spoke everything into existence, including all the laws of nature. Think of a flower in the middle of the Amazon rainforest that no one has ever seen before. Why was it made? For God's pleasure. Think of the fish so deep under the sea that no human eye has laid upon them. Why were they created? For God's pleasure. The elders say they were created. For thy pleasure they are and were created. Even you yourself are created for his pleasure. Why don't you make every effort to please him? And the Bible tells us exactly how to do that. Hebrews 11 verse 6 But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him.